Hey guys, in this vlog, we're going to talk about the risk of choosing the wrong programming language. What are the risks? Well, don't worry about it. There's no risk. Yep, there's no risk. The reason I'm putting out this vlog is because I get a sense that people are concerned about making that right choice. Oh my, if I don't make the right choice, if I choose the wrong programming language to learn, my career will be over. Not even... Nothing could be further from the truth. Don't worry about it. The reason you shouldn't be concerned, whether you choose C Sharp, Java, Swift, Python, PHP, Ruby, JavaScript, it doesn't really matter in the end because let's say you do choose a particular language and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna ch choose one. Okay, I'll choose one. Visual Fox Pro. This is a language nobody uses these days. And uh, let's say you choose one and you learn everything about the language, you become competent, you're able to build apps with the language, and then you discover that because you didn't listen to my suggestion, you discover that there's no work in Visual Fox Pro anymore. So what do you do? Are you done? No. Because what you're going to learn when you learn how to program, regardless of the language, so many languages these days share so many of the same techniques, principles, and concepts that for you to move from, say, Java to JavaScript will be easy. For you to move from Python to uh, JavaScript or PHP will be pretty easy. Yeah, there are differences, but for all the major languages that are out there today, the ones I just mentioned, Java, JavaScript, C Sharp, Objective C, Swift, Python, PHP, Ruby, and others, they share so many of the same principles. I would say once you learn one of them, you probably know about 80% of all the others. The hard part about learning how to program is just learning the basic concepts and learning how to put everything together to create good apps. But creating good apps and being a good developer is not about knowing details about the language. It's it's about learning how to be a good developer. It's kind of a universal thing. Kind of like learning how to drive well. Whether you drive a Porsche, an Audi, a BMW, a Ford, a Chrysler, if you know how to drive well, you know how to drive well. Yes, there are nuances and differences between the cars. There are nuances and differences between the languages. But at the end of the day, it's very, very similar. So don't worry about it. If you decide to pick up Python, and you figure out uh, six months from now, a year from now, or even two years from now, the market changes and it goes into some other language or some other framework or whatever. It doesn't matter, you'll be able to pick it up. You see, again, that's why I always emphasize in my courses the key basics. I give you the big picture, I dive into it, I teach you how to build things for real so that these skills are transferable to any language. And I'm not just speaking you know, theoretically, this represents my own career. I've been coding since the 1990s, early 90s, and I've written commercial apps in eight or nine languages over the years. I forget the exact number now. And what you'll see is that the hardest language to learn, the hardest programming language to learn is the first one. But after that, it becomes very easy. For you to switch over from Python to Java won't be such a big leap. Now, some languages are, are, are more similar than other languages. So for instance, JavaScript and uh, Java are a little closer together than say Python and Java. C Sharp and Java, by the way, are like super, super close because C Sharp was basically Microsoft's answer to Java. Anyhow, I won't get into a history lesson. So that's the point of this vlog. Don't get too caught up in making your language choice because whichever language you choose to learn first will not be a waste of time because all those skills are very much transferable to any other language. Again, and I'll close with this, whenever you're choosing a programming language, it's important that you consider A, the type of work that you want to do, look into that because writing iOS apps is a very different beast, for example, than programming AI with Python, which is very different than developing web apps with WordPress, excuse me, with PHP and maybe the Laravel framework as an example. And the other thing you have to consider is in your geographic area, in the where you live, the city, the part of the world that you live, 
what's the demand? Where is the demand for uh, for for your area? It will be or it could be very different from where I live. So check into that. How do you do that? You go to jobs boards. You look for local job listings and so on. And then the final thing is to, is to consider whether or not you want to go work for somebody or you're looking to become a freelancer. That's a whole different thing as well in terms of what skills translate into freelance. As I said before, doing Java is probably not the best choice if you want to become a freelancer. PHP is probably a much better choice. But on the other hand, if you want to go work for very large corporations, then Java is a choice for you. And I can go on and on about all the other languages, but you could just check out my careers in code a playlist where I have all these videos on choosing languages based on careers and options that are affected by that language and the environment around the language. What do I mean by the environment around the language? Each language has an ecosystem and understanding that ecosystem around the language plays a big role in terms of, uh, in terms of what skills you have to learn, of course. So uh, you'll see that Python's ecosystem is very different from PHP's. Not necessarily better, but just different, and Java as well. And that all reflects on the use case of the language. Use case meaning how the language is used in industry. And that comes back finally to uh, finish, complete this circle. It comes back to the type of work you want to do. So there you go. Don't sweat it. Don't, don't let it bother you that you're risking choosing the wrong language. There's no such thing in today's environment. All right, ciao.